Hey, welcome back to the shop, guys. So we got a new problem today. Uh, this one's gonna be electrical. Come on, first here to get power from here. To there. So I've got a neighbor who's got an electrical problem. They tried to tackle it themselves. Can't really afford an electrician, so we're gonna step in, help them figure it out, and we're gonna do it safely. So stick around if you're interested in learning how to install an electrical sub panel. We'll see you at the end. First thing we gotta do is we gotta knock out a hole to put our conduit through. Looks like it's gonna be a tight fit. The original hole is going to go with on the bottom isn't large enough, so what we did was we're coming from the side. And I know all the professionals out there tell me it's crazy horrible, but sometimes the situations you just got to work with what you got. Um, more important, just to kind of, you know, neighbor had a problem, couldn't get anyone out. Rather than see someone try something on their own and be unsafe. Uh, may not be pretty, but we're at least going to uh, show how to do it safely. What we did here is um, inch and a quarter. That's what size conduit she had. We'll pull cables through this and um, get it down to another sub panel. It's going to be down here. We're going to disconnect at this point here and pull it starting from this connection and we'll go through and then we'll come back later and pull it through to the box. Sorry for the shaky camera, but I'm new at this. I'll get better, I promise. Okay. So it may look funny, like I'm starting from the wrong side, but it'll make sense here in a minute. Keep watching. Now we won't glue sections until we've got everything laid out i always glue last don't know if that's proper form but that's how i do it and like i said you know here we're just you know figuring things out Just out of habit, I like to put the open end, the bell end, downhill so that you don't have, you know, you know what I'm saying. I like to get it through each section at a time, which is pretty much how you have to do it when you're working with cable and conduit like this. Okay, now comes the fun part, gluing. I'm not gonna glue that in first because it's got a lot of moving pieces there. I'm gonna start over here between the first pull sections. I'm not gonna glue it, I'm just gonna try and get it all somewhat assembled now we've got a rough fit through there 
I'll make my last glue connections up there when I pull it through to the box. Ahead and mounted the box. Got it level. It's where our conduit's coming in. We're gonna have to cut that piece to adjust. So it's going to go into that elbow and then come straight up into the box right there. Like I said, this isn't Mike's professional electric service. This is Mike's. We're figuring this out as we go. We do want to make it safe and make it secure. So that one is going into a stud that's an inch and a half screw. I'm going to put two more there. I already put the two in the bottom. Um, it's pretty solid, so I don't believe it's going anywhere. Then what we'll do is when we're done to seal it up, Along the back crack back there, we're going to put a bunch of silicone. We're going to seal the box around just to make sure that we don't get any moisture back there. So, stay tuned. Got some panels installed, got all the wire wound up in there. Going to make it weather tight because it looks like it's going to be raining soon. Everything is glued. Put everything over here. Try not to be too jiggly with the camera, but you know. Then we got it pulled into here. I would do a little dirt work to make the conduit lay down a little bit better. Got wrapped up in there, and then we will be back tomorrow to finish up. Always remember to put the nut okay. and then put this cap on here. This nut and this cap. The nut will lock it in so it doesn't come out, and this is kind of a protective thing for the cabling. It's important that you label these wires, but I just want to tell you safety reasons is very important label these wires for the safety of yourself and the next guy okay guys now that we have it all wired up it's important to go ahead and put on our ground which is there um we're gonna run our ground bar or run our ground wire up to our ground bar there it's important that you ground these it's a sub panel but it needs to be properly grounded and this is a grounding rod right here got a six foot and you just bang it into the ground um and pray that you don't have rock down there anyway uh that's the grounding rod and we'll clamp the grounding wire and we'll get that all wired up so let's get after it let me go ahead and do it and then i'll show you afterwards okay guys so when you're hooking up <coughs> okay so when you're hooking up your ground your lead is going to go up here into the ground bar let me see if i can get that to focus a little better these are sometimes an allen head rather than a flat head so go ahead and make sure you got the right size Allen for your application. Um, route your ground wire back through the back of everything. Run it down. Usually there's a small punch out for these. Run it down. I try to put the grounding rod as close to where it's going to be routed. And then we'll tie it in and I'll show you how that connection goes. Okay guys, we have a, a slight side project. This uh, piece of wire was existing. Um, it's like she had another, I think she said another electrician ran some uh, outlets inside and we wanna make this hot. That one, so what we're gonna do is, we're going to put this box, and we're gonna run flexible conduit over and into the bottom of this panel. And it'll get to its own breaker there. That'll give her, I think, two or three outlets inside. Uh, we'll cover that here in a bit. So uh, let me get this installed. Okay, so got the box installed, little junction box. I got the uh, Romex stripped. I'm gonna go ahead and make my connections, run the rest of the wire down through some flexible conduit into here. So, get that done. So I got the conduit run, I've got it secured with the connections. Just wanna tighten them, there's a little uh, rubber O-ring up there, you just wanna get that snug so it's watertight. Same thing on this side, get it in there. Uh, you can see I've got the wire pulled, we'll need to make our connections there. And we've got the wire pulled in here, this nut. I'm gonna secure that as solid as you can, you know, within reason, don't break it. Uh, so we've got our connections made. Since they're outdoor, I mean, I, I tape them up. I feel like it's a good idea to tape them up. We'll get those tucked away and get the cover on this. We've got our clamps in, you kind of see that is what I call a drip loop. I believe that's the proper term, that way if any water gets on the conduit, it'll come and it'll drip down. It's away from the house, 
so it doesn't drip on the house either. So, and we've got our electrical connection made here. Single circuit, 20 amp here. Our neutral's hooked up, our ground is hooked up, our ground and our neutral come in right here, nice and clean. Okay, so we got it all buttoned up. Don't judge the, don't judge the caulking job. It's just the main point here is to ensure that it is watertight. Um, as you can see, we've got it all done up. Uh, I'll step away so you can get a better shot. Okay, so the next step we've got is we're gonna drop a small outlet, an outdoor outlet, right about there. So let me get to that. Okay, guys, so got it pretty wrapped up here on this end by the house. We've got the connection going into the house, conduit running with our uh, drip curl. Um, into the panel, we got our outdoor outlet wired up. We've got the wire run inside. As you can see, got our outlet coming in from down below. The run going into this addition of the house. And then going into our breakers. Again, guys, I'm going to stress the importance of labeling your wires. Make sure for safety your ground make sure everything's good this is a sub panel of the house there's no need to bond the ground just needs a separate ground straight to ground okay guys the final connection we've got to make is we've got to get that neutral wire into that lug and to do that though we're going to go ahead and turn off the main power right there and get that done okay guys so we've Cut the power here and just to be on the safe side since we have access to the meter went ahead and pulled the meter it's right here now i know all the professionals out there are like good god don't do that as long as you carefully unplug this carefully plug it back in and make sure that the breaker here is off so there is no load you should be relatively okay Again, I'm not, you know, I don't claim to be a professional expert. I know how to do it. As you can see, guys, our neutral wire is in our neutral lug. Sorry for the camera focusing in and out due to my finger jumping in there. Um, we've got our primary lead, our secondary lead. We turned the power back on after putting our meter back in. Uh, I do that just to be safe because when you pull the meter there is absolutely no juice going to those wires. So what we'll do is before we power those on we're going to go back to the other panel and make sure that we have uh, nothing flipped on there. We want to make sure that at the other panel we have everything off including the main lugs. So let's go including the main breaker. So let's go take a look. And they appear to be off so it looks good. Now what we'll do is we'll get our multimeter and we're going to test for 120, 120. So let's go grab our multimeter. Okay, so we're gonna check our voltage from the main panel over to this sub panel. Your black lead is gonna go to your neutral lug. Your red is gonna go to your first primary. And we're checking, we've got 124 volts. We're gonna check the secondary. We should also have another 124 volts, and we do. So we've tested, we've got good power. So what we're going to do now is we've got our outlet checker. It's a Klein. It tells us if we have a ground fault. Make sure the uh, make sure it's correct. So let me go ahead and flip on that breaker. Make sure it's okay. After I turn on the main breaker, and it looks like we've got two amber lights. Which if we look. Two amber lights means that everything is correct. So we've got the sub panel hooked up. We've verified our voltage. Our outlet is working, which means we'll just test the outlet inside.
forget to put your sticker on so that uh, firefighting, any uh, emergency services, they know where the emergency disconnect is. Okay, also when you're putting in your cover, don't forget to notch out your breaker plugs. Otherwise, when you go to put this back on, it won't fit. And that's pretty much it. It's all wrapped up. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys got something out of the video. If there's anything specific as far as outlet wiring, uh, wire sizing and grounding, just shoot me a comment. Uh, maybe we do some other content on that. Other than that though, guys, I really appreciate you. And uh, until next time, I'll see you back here in the shop.